Okay. So um, QQ strain of no outliers, what does that mean? QQ means the following. So when we talk about QQ, we're talking about Y and X are quantitative. If you see a scatter plot, it satisfies QQ. Like you can't do the remaining, <laughs> you can't do the remaining conditions if QQ is not met. So QQ is met unless you don't have a scatter plot. If it's not going to be QQ, then like QQ means bivariate quantitative. Uh, if you're in another class, pl please write like quantitative variables. I accept QQ because it matters more. You can tell me that both variables are quantitative. That's what it means when I say QQ. Like I like QQ because it means you have a quantitative X and a quantitative Y. So it's QQ. And it kind of starts out the chant. QQ straight enough. No outliers. Plot doesn't thicken. So we do that chant in my class all the time. And then when we say straight enough, we're going to draw the right example here and the wrong example here. And you know what? Let's put a wrong example down here. Someone earlier was asking about a mosaic plot. Uh, this is the counterexample of when it fails. A mosaic plot is not quantitative quantitative. We get space pen back in the lecture. So um, <laughs> a, a mosaic plot is not uh, QQ. So these are all the right ones. Oh, whoops, wrong colors. Got to use the green for the right one and got to use the red for the wrong ones. Everything down here is incorrect and would not pass the condition. There are many ways you can not pass QQ, like having categorical quantitative, like side-by-side -side box plots would not do re regression, but a, uh, a categorical categorical is not QQ. The next condition right here is straight enough. And remember, everything on the top is going to pass. So we're still doing all the correlation conditions and regression conditions. Um, <laughs> and so straight enough, well, it looks like the one we just drew. <laughs> straight enough, don't worry if it's not perfect. It can have a little bend. That's straight enough. I mean, I could draw a little, little bend there and a little bend here. Not perfect, kind of going further over than I need because I need more space. But um, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I drew too perfect of a one. Sure. That has a little bit of a bend right there. It's got a little bend, not perfect. It's straight enough. It's not called the perfectly straight condition, but um, there we go. And Brent, Brenna, I agree. <laughs> now, not straight enough might look something like this. Now, let's ask a really big question right here. Uh, the correlation on this, I'm going to do it even better. The correlation on this graphic is going to be close to what? What will the correlation on this graphic be very close to? The correlation on the bottom graphic will be very close to what? What would the correlation on the bottom graphic be close to? Straight enough means that a straight line well approximates at Heidi. Great question. So it's going to be close to zero. So when you plot the line through here, the correlation or the linear regression doesn't do a good job with it. And so this is where we meet it. And this one would not meet it down below because it's categorical category. You can't even do the remaining conditions on that because it doesn't meet it. So we're drawing the red pen to show where it doesn't meet it and the green pen to show where it meets it. QQ is met because both variables are quantitative. So I circled the X and the Y are quantitative variables. I would say X and Y are both quantitative variables. Now the bottom graphic I just drew, is there a relationship between X and Y in that graphic? Is there a relationship between X and Y in the bottom graphic? Is there a relationship? Is there some sort of relationship at all? And the answer is most definitely yes. Correlation of zero does not mean two variables are not related. It means in with Pearson correlation, which we do in this class, it means there's no linear correlation. There's no linear association. So there's a parabolic relationship to this that we can clearly see some sort of parabolic equation, but it's not linear. It's a strong nonlinear. Julio's right, right there. So the form is nonlinear. It's still strong uh, from the vertical scatter. It's actually stronger than the top one. The top one is actually weaker than the bottom one, but the top one has a higher correlation because correlation measures linear strength. So QQ, straight enough, no outliers. When we talk about no outliers, we don't want to see outliers. And I like to say no outliers because outliers are bad. Now, we'll say this. We try to make the outliers as clear as possible. On the test or something, I really like to make my outlier something like this right here. You know what I'm going to do on the test? I'm probably going to circle that outlier and be like, oh my gosh, look at that outlier. That outlier is way out of control. So we got QQ straight enough, no outliers. The reason I say no outliers is because I want to say we pass the condition of no outliers. To pass the condition of no outliers, there should be no outliers. So we'll draw a nice perfect one up here. And it can have, it can have, yeah, sure, whatever. I mean, this doesn't really have any big outliers. Every residual plot will look, or every plot will look a little bit different. 
but there should be no outliers. I mean, even that, it's probably not a big thing. Look for the bad ones that get away from you. We really don't have any big outliers. We really don't have anything that's extreme. And look for the extreme things. I'm putting a little like worse ones, but look for the extreme. That's probably the best tip I can give because if there's an outlier, we want to try to highlight it. QQ straight enough, no outliers. Plot does not thicken. Plot does not thicken is going to go right here. And hopefully, yep, got enough space, just barely. When we talk about plot does not thicken, what are we talking about? That plot does not thicken condition means that the plot itself does not get any thicker or thinner. So one example I like to use right here is I like to say, what if it got thinner? What if the plot right here got thinner? So when you look at this right here, it's actually getting thinner. Does that pass or fail? Well, hint, it's on the bottom. So we're going to draw some bands around it to show where it has the problem. The bands around it being this right here um, are showing that there's a problem. We have a change in strength that fails. Nice job in the chat. And if you notice right here, we kind of have a constant strength to this. Now, it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm drawing some like really good examples that show you what's going on, where this is going to get like really strong here at the end. And the plot got thicker at a different part. So when we say, does this apply to residual plots? And it does also apply to residual plots. Um, so anything we draw here could also be made into a residual plot. So all you'd have to do to turn any of these into a residual plot is take the line and make it flat. So I'm going to draw a little example below this because I could make a residual, residual plot of this. The line would be flat, and then the points would be here, and you would still see that huge outlier down here. If I were to turn this one into a residual plot, it would have this, and then it would have the points all like this, and then they'd get closer as they went on. So there'd be this huge scatter at the start. So how do we turn a regression into a residual plot? You take the line and you make it flat. So if you think about this one up here, I'll draw a residual plot of it up here, you'd make that line flat, the line being what goes through the middle of it right here. Can't draw a line through the middle of it. But you would just take that line and make it flat, and then if you notice, look at this residual plot I'm drawing right here. The residual plot is the line flat. So does everyone remember the question we just did? Look at that top residual plot, and let's go back and take a look to the thing. I'm going to have to go back to lecture and then we'll hop back right into this. Let's go here.